Critical work continues to create a new Francis Scott Key Bridge over the Patapsco River. The team has been very busy since the start of the project, but especially in the last few months. Pre-construction activities kicked off in January 2025. MDTA Chief Engineer Jim Harkness says crews have spent a lot of time collecting soil samples from as deep as 200 feet beneath the surface of the water and land. Understanding those subsurface conditions, he says, is vital to designing strong foundations for the bridge. So each of those 100 locations yields information about the soil type, the soil density, and the soil properties, uh, and as well as the depth at which those soils are located. Crews also conducted surveys and mapped the area to support construction planning. Just getting the terrain uh, of the existing surfaces, um, but it also in included investigations for underground utilities. The new design will be Maryland's first cable-stayed bridge. Harkness says his team partnered with a firm called RWDI in Canada to conduct wind tunnel testing. We conducted modeling uh, of the, the proposed bridge. We have to understand how uh, a bridge like a cable state bridge is going to react in the wind conditions um, given the geometry of our bridge. So we were able to take that, um, make a physical model, and then test that in the wind tunnel. Scour testing is another informative pre-construction analysis. Due to the unique nature to this project and this portion of the Patapsco River, Harkness says researchers test a model of the bridge foundation to gauge the potential for soil erosion due to flowing water. Use both um, computer models for uh, running the, the mathematics uh, behind the scour analysis, but then they also take that and put it into a, a, a large scale flume uh, so that they can run um, actual water past it and, and see how the, uh, the material is behaving. Harkness says they've purchased materials for test pile fabrication. Soon, crews will drive steel test piles into the river. Essentially run tests on those to figure out um, if they're providing the expected capacity um, for our bridge foundation. So we, uh, we'll drive these piles and then we'll set up tests and uh, measure the results. Keeping the community top of mind, crews inspected more than 1,100 properties ahead of construction. So we can understand the condition of those properties prior to doing any um, real construction activity out at the site. Um, we're documenting those conditions and um, we worked with property owners. We were able to document that for future use um, and, and make sure that we're being good neighbors during construction. To minimize any potential impact on nearby residents, MDTA crews will install noise and vibration monitoring devices to regularly track sound levels throughout construction. You wouldn't even know they're there unless you know what you're looking for, um, but it will give us uh, very good data on the pre-construction levels for vibration and noise so that we can compare those to the noise levels and the vibration levels during construction to understand if we need to do anything to mitigate any impacts there. As the summer months carry on, Harkness says so will these pivotal pre-construction activities. We'll be looking at uh, continuing with additional boring locations. We'll be also uh, working our test pile program and getting that underway um, in, this summer and, and that'll carry over into early fall. And additionally, we're going to be looking to start the demolition process of the existing bridge. And so we look to have that underway this summer as well. For the MDTA, I'm Allison Persing.